Section 18 of Movies and Hollywood Short Story Collection, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clatt. Alice in Movie Land. Demonstrating that adventures just as unusual may happen in a film studio as behind a looking glass or down a rabbit hole. By William Warren. Alice sat in the movie theatre watching the show. She was very much interested in it, and wished she had brought along the black kitten that had started her on her adventure in looking glass land so he could see it too. But they did not allow kittens in the theatre, on account of foolish rules made by the grown-ups on the Board of Health. The place was nice and warm, and Alice felt quite comfortable as she sat watching the hero and heroine ride along a grey ribbon of road on the screen and vanish over the top of a hill. "'I wonder what it's like in movie land,' said Alice to herself. "'Everything seems so nice and quiet there. I'd like to walk along that road and take a peep at the country behind that hill." Then Alice remembered how easy it had been for her to get into looking-glass land by just walking through the mirror. Why couldn't she do the very same thing here? All she would have to do would be to step right through the screen onto that road and follow it wherever it led. Alice got up from her seat and made her way to the aisle, apologizing to the people whose feet she stepped on. She trotted down to the stage, and climbed up by the organ. The large lady at the console, who was chewing gum, was surprised to see Alice clamber by her. She was so surprised that she pulled the Vox Humana stop all the way out and left it there. She started to call Alice back, but it was too late. Alice had walked up to the screen and found that, as she had thought, she could go right through it. The next minute, Alice was pattering up the road. She got to the top of the hill, and there on the other side she came upon the hero and the heroine sitting by the road eating lunch out of a tin box. "'Hello, little girl,' said the movie hero to Alice. "'Who are you, and what are you doing here?' "'Why, I'm Alice,' said the little girl. "'I'm Lewis Carroll's Alice, who went to Wonderland and to Looking Glass Land afterwards. I thought I'd like to see what movie land is like, so I came up your road." "'Well, we're glad to see you, Alice,' said the movie heroine. "'Sit down with us and have some lunch, won't you?' Alice thought it was nice of the movie heroine to ask her to eat with them, and thanked her with a curtsy. The movie hero pulled out a sandwich and gave it to her. The long performance in the theatre had made Alice quite hungry, and she took a great big bite out of the sandwich. But it was a funny kind of sandwich. Instead of having butter and chicken between the slices of bread, it had newspaper clippings. "'Don't you like it, Alice?' asked the movie heroine. "'I'm sure it is a very nice sandwich,' said Alice politely. "'But I am not used to eating sandwiches that are made out of paper.' "'Why, that's what we live on here in Movie Land," said the movie hero. "'That paper is newspaper clippings about ourselves, telling what fine actors we are, and how many hundreds of thousands of dollars we get in a year. In Movie Land we eat up all the notices about ourselves we can find.' Alice could not think of anything to say to this, and she did not want to hurt their feelings by refusing to eat the food they had offered her, so she pretended to nibble at the sandwich while watching them closely. The movie hero, she thought, was terribly good-looking. She liked the movie heroine at first sight, too. "'Let's go back to town and show Alice what kind of a place we live in,' said the heroine to the hero. The movie hero helped the movie heroine onto her horse. Then he mounted his and took Alice on the saddle in front of him. "'Don't be afraid, Alice,' he said. "'The horse won't run away.' No horse ever runs away in movie land unless it is the heroine's and the scenario writer had fixed it up for the hero to save her life. Soon they came to a bend in the road, and Alice was staring at a great flat plain with an immense jumble of buildings close at hand. There were French chateaus, Moorish palaces, English castles, 
country places, tenement houses, bank buildings, skyscrapers, Swiss chalets, shooting lodges, farmhouses, barns, country stores, wild west saloons, railroad stations, factories, townhouses, sawmills, and every other kind of a building you could think of. That is Movie City, said the movie heroine. By this time they had reached the main street of the town. The movie hero gently let Alice slip to the ground, and he and the movie heroine dismounted. "'Hello, little girl. Come over and talk to me,' trilled a silvery voice. Alice turned around and saw a lovely lady lying on a divan. The lady had on a dress cut very low. Her eyes had an odd slant about them that made her ever so alluring. Alice started to go to her. "'Stop, Alice!' called out the movie hero. "'You mustn't go in there. That lady is a vampire.' "'Why shouldn't I?' inquired Alice. "'She isn't a nice lady, dear,' said the movie heroine. "'She has broken up dozens of happy homes, and scores of bank cashiers and company treasurers have gone to prison for stealing money to buy her jewels. When they find out she has tricked them and curse her, she just laughs and lies back on the sofa and lights another cigarette. She never gets found out until the last hundred feet of film. Why, she almost stole the hero here away from me once. "'Oh, do look!' called out Alice, as the cutest little white rabbit ran up and sat on his hind legs in front of her. "'Who are you?' he asked. "'I'm Alice,' she said. "'Are you one of the Mad March Hare's children? I used to know him awfully well.' "'Never heard of the Mad March Hare,' said the movie rabbit. "'And I'd like to shoot the scenario writer who made the movie rabbit a cross between a rag doll and a powder puff,' he complained. The movie rabbit hopped away rudely, and Alice was glad to see him go. "'Say, Bo, give me a match,' husked a voice in the movie hero's ear. It came from an undersized young man in a shabby suit who wore a cap pulled down over his eyes and stood with a shiftless slouch. His jaw was stuck away out, and he needed to shave badly. Alice didn't like his looks at all. "'Here, Alice, let me present the movie gunman to you.' said the movie hero. The movie gunman smiled crookedly. "'You're a cute little tyke,' he grinned. "'He's not such a bad sort,' said the movie hero, as the movie gunman swaggered away. They went down to the station and saw the train off. The farmer's daughter climbed on with the tail feathers of a hen sticking out of her valise, and a princess travelling incognito had a seat in the Pullman and toyed with a magazine. There was a stout, white-haired gentleman in a frock-coat and silk hat, with a big gold chain across his waistcoat, standing on the observation platform of a special car. He was the president of the road, and his daughter was somewhere inside talking with the elderly millionaire her father wanted her to wed. Just as the train pulled out, a good-looking young chap dashed up on a motorcycle all covered with dust, but he was too late. He was the sweetheart of the railroad president's daughter, and he was following her to tell her he had struck it rich in his gold-mine after two long, lonely weeks of prospecting. It was a typical train departure scene in movie land, the movie hero informed Alice. When the cars had left, the station-master came out and stood looking down the tracks, scratching his head. Then the telegraph operator rushed out with the news that the bridge over the river was down, and all on board the train were rushing to certain death. The young chap who loved the railroad president's daughter at once ran over to an airplane in a nearby field and started off in it at ninety miles an hour to stop the express. Alice thought this was the liveliest railroad station she had ever seen, and she was sorry when the movie heroine took her by the arm and said they had better be going back into the town. They were walking quietly along when all of a sudden Alice chanced to look up into the air and saw a man falling from a balloon. He landed in the street not ten feet away, and a huge steamroller ran over him. "'Oh, the poor man!' cried Alice. "'Don't worry, Alice,' said the movie heroine kindly. "'He isn't hurt a bit. He's the movie comedian.' The movie comedian got up, dusted his clothes with a tiny cane, set his hat at a jaunty angle, and skidded over to the opposite sidewalk, where a pretty girl was standing. At that minute an automobile sped by with a clergyman in it, and the movie comedian reached out and grabbed him by the collar. 
Then the movie comedian led the movie clergyman up to the pretty girl and took her by the hand, and the marriage service started. "'There, Alice,' said the movie heroine, "'now you've seen a bit of real comedy in movie land." Alice was about to pass on with the movie hero and the movie heroine when the strangest thing happened. Across the street the movie clergyman shot backwards into the automobile, and at the railroad station the train came rolling in backwards, and the airplane flew home backwards. Everywhere Alice looked the people of Movieland were going around backwards. Then she heard piteous cries from the movie hero and movie heroine who were disappearing backwards down the street toward the station. "'Help us, Alice!' they cried. "'Run out to the movie operator in the theatre and tell him to stop quick. He's running us all the wrong way.' Alice waited for no more, but started up the hill. She ran and she ran and she ran, knowing how important it was to help her friends in their terrible plight, and at last she came to the top of the hill, and away off in the distance she saw the lady at the organ. "'Just one more little minute and I'll be there,' she said to herself, and shut her eyes so the way wouldn't seem so long. Alice opened her eyes to find that a fat lady was poking her. "'Wake up, little girl!' The show is over," said the fat lady, and Alice found that she was back in her seat in the theatre. On the screen, not going backwards at all now, the movie hero and the movie heroine were clasped in each other's arms, while a circle of black was drawing in about them. The movie heroine's face was towards the audience, and she was looking directly at Alice. Alice was quite sure the movie heroine smiled at her, just as the fade away went out. End of section 18